Recently, I did a video outlining Intel's Royal Core project. This would be the core architecture that would be probably the biggest upgrade for Intel, honestly, maybe ever. Radical IPC increases, incredible new features, and, well, something a lot of people skipped over, something I called a machine learning accelerator. And I'm going to be honest, I phrased it that way because... I really didn't have time to dig into what that really meant. Now, this comes from one of my best sources, and I had to sit on that information for a very long time. But to be clear, this is a person that confirmed Nova Lake to me at the beginning of this year, which is far before anyone said anything public about it, far before that mysterious Reddit post. Now, what was actually said is that by Lunar Lake, Intel will bring major AI performance improvements through an integrated VPU machine learning accelerator in SOCs. And I removed the second half of that quote because, again, I don't really know what that meant. But recently, another one of my best sources told me that Meteor Lake would get an integrated VPU and that it's similar to the neural engine in the Apple M1 for speed recognition and a lot of other machine learning tasks. And so... Once I saw a second source, nay, a second, one of my best sources mentioned this and mentioned it in Meteor Lake, not something way off in the distance, I went, all right, it's time for me to really dig into this. Is this really going to be used for anything useful? Um, well, there was a presentation that happened recently that really hit home for me how this will be used. And I'm going to get into that and what I think this means for Intel, but first an ad from a sponsor. Why are you looking at me like that? Don't judge me. Let's do, we're doing the ad. Raid Shadow Legends is a turn-based role-playing game with hundreds of characters and factions with unique lore. One such character type with a unique lore are orcs. Orcs are typically considered the bad guys in most lores, but in Teleria, you could argue they are just misunderstood. They're created by a dark lord, sure, but at this point in the lore, they are really just nomads, paying for their ancestors' creation and wars they took no part in. And I bring them up just to give you one example of the many deep pieces of lore in this game. Experience it for yourself and in fact this month raids just released a huge doom tower update with two new bosses to take on astra inks the dark fey and bomo the dreadhorn and if that's not enough september and october will be packed with awesome events and tournaments including one very special event the brand new feature super raids super raids let you double up your rewards with hitting dungeons and massively speed up your progress this is amazing for new players and so it's really never been a better time to jump in to get in on the action click the link in the description or scan the on-screen QR code to get an epic hero, Chanaru, who exceeds at conquering the Doom Towers and also 200,000 silver, an XP booster, an energy refill, and an ancient chart for summoning awesome champions. Click now to support Moore's Law's Dead YouTube channel before this offer expires in 30 days. Clicking this link really does help me, and it also ensures you don't miss out on the perfect time to jump into this game. Download Raid Shadow Legends today. So again, I had now two sources as of about a month ago confirming that Intel was bringing effectively something similar to Apple's neural engine to their architectures by the end of 2023. And like I said, when I first saw VPU and Machine Learning Accelerator, I didn't even look into it. It seemed like a bunch of terms that if I dug into would take time and would be entirely over my head. But once I had double confirmation, I had quite a lot of back and forth conversations with a couple of sources. Like a VPU, is that really a neural engine? Those almost sound like just two different buzzwords. And when I looked around, Intel already owns a company that makes VPUs, vision processing units, which seems like these are things that analyze pictures for neural networks. Okay, so there's neural network. You know, Apple calls there's a neural engine. Is it the same thing? And when I looked into it, a lot of these words, you know, tensor processing units, neural network processors, IPUs, VPUs, they are used back and forth between each other. So it sounded like this was something that in a few years will be used for tasks a VPU does and what Intel focuses on with these types of products right now, but will also be able to do other things. And this is something that I saw other people analyzing the difference between A11 and what Intel's got right now. Well, that there are similarities and that if I look around, Movidius, you know, owned by Intel, their latest one here 
does have a neural compute engine. And so there you go. It is referred to as a VPU, I believe, because that is what Intel's focusing on now, but it will be able to do other things. And that, yeah, this isn't something Intel specializes in now like Apple does, but that they will want to specialize in in a few years. And the more I dug into it, there were two key things to really really understand. Number one is that this probably is not very big. So really the drawbacks, there really aren't that many. You know, what are you going to do? Add another core? We're already getting to Raptor Lake with 24 cores and God knows how many from AMD by the end of 2023. So once you start getting past 16 cores in mainstream products, I think it is a fair argument to say that it's time to just use some of that die space for other accelerators like what Apple is doing and that this could be used for upscaling 480p video to 1080p. And I don't just mean making your 1080p Netflix account look like 4K, although that's certainly something they might try to do. I mean, if you're on Netflix and because of high network traffic at night, you're getting throttled in your apartment building and there's nothing you can do about it, perhaps your laptop could upgrade the video quality just that little bit if it's an Intel laptop. That would be an advantage they have over AMD. Or even if you're scrolling Reddit and a video pops up and starts playing at a low resolution, the laptop dynamically can see that it is a video that can be upscaled and upscales it for you in real time. You know, this could be a big marketing push by Intel to say things just look clearer on our laptops. So if you have two laptops, one's AMD and one's Intel, then you go, wow, this Intel one just looks better. Intel laptops look better. What you don't know is there is a machine learning accelerated upscale going on. And that's when I finally started to be convinced, okay, this is useful. And I mean, who doesn't use a photo editing app from time to time? It can be used for that. And then I saw Apple's presentation. Let me play a few clips here from the Apple event in September. Combined with the CPU and the GPU, the neural engine enables apps to deliver next level experiences. Like the new Translate app in iPadOS 15, which can automatically translate a conversation in real time. With a new ISP, users will see enhanced photos with smart HDR, which improves image quality by recovering details in shadows and highlights. And now with the ability to record in 4K, iPad mini becomes your mobile movie studio. We've increased the performance of our CPU's dedicated machine learning accelerators that power experiences such as advanced text-to-speech in Siri, and on-device processing of directions in maps. The ML advancements across our entire chip will empower developers to do even more in their apps, like Swing Vision, which can smoothly run powerful core ML and AR models on A15 Bionic for real-time shot tracking, video analysis, and remote coaching. Peak Visor helps you navigate the outdoors to identify mountains and explore detail-rich 3D maps while hiking. And Seek uses a machine learning model trained by over 20 million photos to instantly identify plants and animals around you. And all the processing is done on device. And it's funny, I actually started digging into this before that Apple event, and a lot of what I found was people on Reddit arguing if it's even a useful thing to include and if any apps really use that neural engine. But it seems pretty clear to me that if not when Apple first added neural engines, you know, about a year or so ago, but now it is being used by a lot of apps. And, you know, by 2023, I guess I could actually see it being used in a ton of things. This will have been after years of Apple having it at standard. Uh, conceivably, a lot of Android SoCs will have one. And... Yeah, I mean, by then, even if you mostly think of these type of apps as something in like a tablet or a phone, yeah, I guess if it takes up very little space, why not have something that massively accelerates things like photo recognition, upscaling, and encoding? This is something that's pretty brilliant. And look, I know what a lot of you power users on expensive gaming desktops and laptops watching this right now are still probably thinking that everything Apple showed off seemed mobile-centric and that at the end of the day just doesn't feel like, well, you're probably unconvinced by the end of this video that this is something that will affect you. And all I can say is two things. Number one, this is a lot of these things are above my head. Uh, I just, this is not what I normally am. 
analyze, and this is something that I'm now just starting to pay a lot more attention to. But additionally, that when I asked a source at Intel about this, he emphasized to me that Apple showed mobile-centric stuff because they are a mobile-centric company, of course, that this will be used for desktop-centric stuff as well. And the point is that it will allow basic developers to build apps that only mega companies could do before with more resources, that at the end of the day, it's hard to grasp what it will be used for because the things just haven't been built yet. You have people on Reddit right now complaining that the neural engine isn't used for much, and it isn't. It isn't used for much right now at Apple, but that this will be used for a lot in the future. An example I was given is that you could literally have the OS, Windows 11, have a built-in ability where you just circle on screen, whether with a mouse or just with your finger on a touchscreen, a piece of text, and it will just be able to identify it quickly and read it to you, whether it's while you're cooking, while gaming, or doing something else on your desktop. And it's funny how Apple kind of had it underused at first, but was able to pave the way into something new that Intel seems to be planning to use for everything in a few years. You know, when I look at what Jim at Adore TV is leaking about Arrow Lake, how it's meant to compete with Apple, I can't help but think that it's going to have one too, and that they will be using these all over a lot of their devices. And, in fact, depending on how the ARM acquisition goes and what NVIDIA plans to do with their own custom SoCs in the future... I would bet they're going to do stuff with this as well. But at this point, I'm getting into speculation. What I wanted to talk about in this video is really just the fact that this is coming, that what you're seeing in Apple chips, Intel is directly going to do in a couple of years. And I would assume AMD and NVIDIA will as well. That Apple actually was ahead of the game on this one, it seems. So, yeah interesting. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's really all I got to say. If you did, remember to check if you're subscribed to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel, ring the bell button so you don't miss upcoming leaks and other analysis videos, and consider supporting us on Patreon. You'll get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon, uh, exclusive podcasts every other week, and the ability to ask me and guest questions. And then, of course, as always, thank you for watching.